Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. I hope everyone is having a great week. I know I am. This week now with the surge and the increase on February 4th, we're seeing this great surge on the boost on the crypto prices. I see my portfolio for Ethereum and Bitcoin is definitely up. So I know I'm feeling good and I'm sure you're feeling good too. And it's a double header this week because we just got a new update from T-Rex Miner. Version 25.2 was just posted on GitHub within the past day. And we're gonna be testing it out with all our LHR cards. They have some new features specific, mainly geared towards some of the dual mining, which looks extremely promising but you know me I had to get to work right away on it so I'm gonna be testing all six of my LHR cards in my testing rig and we're gonna see how the overclock tuning is doing and see if we can get even higher hash rates than we got with 24.8 stick with me let's get started Looking at the T-Rex GitHub site, you'll notice a new version of the T-Rex Miner was just released within the past day, version 0.25.2. They're noting two major improvements is they've added the Blake 3 algorithm, which is for a lithium coin, and they've added the ability to do ETH and a lithium dual mining for LHR cards. However, in this dual mining mode, they're doing a much larger percentage of Ethereum, and that's what makes this very, very exciting. So I've set out on finding some great overclocks for my LHR cards to do Ethereum mining, as well as some overclocks that'll work good as a great starting place to do some dual mining of Ethereum and Lithium as well. If you're not familiar with using the T-Rex miner, we've created a video specifically about it, how to use T-Rex miner in Windows. You can use it within a batch or even within NiceHash using our T-Rex miner plugin. I'll be putting some links down below that'll help you if you're not familiar with using this miner. For my testing today, I'm gonna to be using a dedicated test rig that contains all six LHR card models. Everything ranging from an RTX 3060 V2 all the way up through to an RTX 3080 Ti and every LHR card model I have in between. Please keep in mind though, this is a dedicated test rig, so it's not running a display or running any additional apps or software that it doesn't need to. There's no extra hardware plugged into it as well. So I will be getting the optimal hash rates out of this test rig. Also, I have very good cooling and ventilation around this test rig. So my GPU temperatures, especially my thermal temperatures, stay at an ideal temperature. If you're using a desktop PC for your mining, especially something with a closed case, you may encounter thermal problems as well as you may want to consider opening up your case or dialing back on your overclock settings or adapting your LHR card values as well. Now for the driver today, I'm gonna to be using NVIDIA driver 496.49. And if you've been following our channel, you know that choosing the correct NVIDIA driver makes a significant difference, especially when you're mining with LHR cards. As I test each card individually, I'm gonna show a title bar up top. And in that title bar is gonna contain the complete command to run the T-Rex miner and pass in the necessary overclock settings. At the end of each card test, I'm going to be displaying a summary result of the hash rate, the overclock settings, as well as the efficiency. Let's get into our testing. The first card I'm going to be testing today is an RTX 3060. It's a V2. This is my MSI Gaming X Trio. It's a very thick card. It has a very, very big, thick radiator, almost like a RTX 3080, even though it's only a RTX 3060. And this card performed really well using a lock core clock of 1575, a memory clock offset of plus 1300. I was able to get great results out of it. I was able to get the LHR value up to 75.3, and I had 37.2 mega hash with a 0.332 efficiency. The next card I'm going to be testing is an RTX 3060 Ti. This is my Zotac card with Hynix memory, which limits me on how high I can push the memory overclock. Anytime if I go above 1025, the card does crash. So using a locked core clock of 1380, as well as a memory clock offset of 1025, I was getting really good results. A 45.3 mega hash at a point. 343 is my efficiency, and the LHR value was pretty stable at 75.3. The next card I'm going to be testing is an RTX 3070 LHR card. This is my EVGA XC3, and this card runs really well, and it stays very, very cool during all of my testing, and I'm just getting great results out of it using a locked core clock of 1,075 and a memory clock offset of plus 1,350. I was getting really good results out of it. I got 46.5 mega hash on average with a 0.427 is my efficiency. So for an LHR card, that's extremely good, and my LHR value climbed up to 74.5 and was very stable at that point. 
The next card I'm going to be testing is an RTX 3070 Ti. This is my Founders Edition card. And this card is a really great budget card, but it performs extremely well for me. I was using a locked core clock of 975, a memory clock offset of plus 1400 I could get away with, and the temperatures held okay, but I got 60.7 mega hash with a 0.339 efficiency. The next card I'm gonna be testing is my RTX 3080 LHR. This is an EVGA XC3 card, and it runs really, really well. I was using a locked core clock of 1350 and a memory clock offset of plus 1400, and this temperature was very, very stable on the card. I was able to keep all my cards at 90 or 92 degrees and under, and that's fantastic given the performance I was able to get out of this card. And my mining results were 76.1 mega hash with a 0.324 efficiency, and the LHR value was steady at about 74.5. My last card I'm going to be testing is an RTX 3080 Ti. This is my EVGA for the win card, and this card is really a great performer. It has great cooling. I've never had to do any BIOS updates or modifications to the card, or even change any thermal pads. It's all stock. And using a locked core clock of 1410 and a memory clock offset a little higher this time of plus 1400, I was able to keep great temperatures down in the lower 80s. I'm seeing on the miner right now, it's even running 82 degrees. That's fantastic. But more so too, I was able to get 91.8 mega hash out of this card. And that's with a 0.357 efficiency. So that's fantastic mining results for this card. Being able to get 91.8, I have a hard time with some full hash rate cards. 3080 getting that hash rate especially keeping that temperature so low i'm very happy with the latest version of the t-rex miner version 0.25.2 i was getting great hash rate for all of my cars and if i compare it against the previous version of the t-rex miner 24.8 i see my hash rate is almost identical the lhr logic between 25.2 and 24.8 does not seem to have made any significant change i'm getting less than half of a half a percent difference between both miners but i'm extremely excited about the new dual mining features of ethereum and lithium now within t-rex miner because in the past we can only get a small portion of ethereum and a large portion of the altcoin whether it be raven conflux or ergo but now we have the ability to mine the lion's share of this of ethereum and a smaller proportions of lithium so i'm able to get over 68 percent of ethereum and a much smaller amount of lithium but it seems to be a much more profitable way to go for it i don't want to spoil the next video i'm already actively working on it so if you haven't already subscribed now is a great time to smash down on that subscribe button so you're notified as soon as that video is ready it's already well under progress i really enjoyed making this video and sharing my journey with you on my test of the latest version of the t-rex miner 25.2 if you've enjoyed this video please give me a big thumbs up like smash down on that subscribe button if you haven't already we welcome all your questions and comments please put them down below until next time we'll see you on the next video happy mining